We're gonna do just a quick demonstration on how you can do the trigger modification so you get a little bit increased plunger depth on your valve. Uh, thing you gotta do is you have to open up your 203 and get the trigger unit out of the body. So to do that, you take the tube off, you lift up on this front latch which releases the whole tube and it'll slide right off. There's uh, two screws in the front of this that you can take out. So I don't forget. This off to the side. And now the, uh, the only thing that's keeping this body in is these two roll pins. So you just need to get uh, some punches of the right size. That's actually the safety bar that's uh, stopping the trigger. Take these pins out fully so you just work with it really. You can see the body deforms a little bit, so just uh, take your time. Now, this is the trigger unit that sets the depth on how far your striker will be hit by this valve. And by increasing this length, the 203 will go off uh, easier because it's letting the valve completely open and faster. You won't have the delay from when you pull the trigger, yank it back, the valve's under pressure, so it's wanting to open, but you didn't open it far enough, and then it'll slow burn sometimes and go off. What you want to do is as soon as it hits the valve, it's letting the 203 get the most velocity and the most performance out of it. So uh, now we're just gonna open this up, and since those screws are out of the front, this top piece will come right off and it's sandwiched into uh, two halves. The mechanism itself is super simple. Um, it's just this uh, firing pin that's on a travel bar. You can see it. This is the retainer to this bar so that it keeps it level and down and push, pushing straight as you're uh, pushing the trigger forward. And what's stopping the 203 from depressing any further is if you see right where this little housing is meeting, right here where this bar that uh, has like a fake, like a extractor or something that's pushing the 203 shell down slightly as you open the tube, it's to give it pressure forward. So this, you don't even need, I took it completely out of mine. All right, so I'm just gonna uh, take the Dremel and just hit this down a little bit. You can see it just needed to depress that bar down a little bit. We're gonna fit this and see if this is enough. Just slide it back on the trigger housing, seat it, and push it forward. Now you can see that it, it travels at least another six millimeters. That's the, the length that you're gonna need. The spring that sits on this and keeps this uh, back pressured, since this is traveling forward, you may just need to cut a couple coils off this spring too. Another thing that I'm looking to see if I need to do is when this trigger is depressed, this will actually hit the bottom of the housing I need to take this screw out, and then I'm going to also need to grind down this trigger. See how there's this, uh, this sharp corner at the bottom here? I need to make that flat on an angle so that foot is steeper so that the trigger can depress down further. Put this unit back together. I leave that other spring and this other piece, just another thing that can just fall apart, so I just don't even, don't even put that back on. So now you can look at the depth and see what you're looking at, where it's gonna bottom out is where this is meeting the, the case when it sits in the case. So what you need to do is fit this back. Put this back pin in first. So it keeps pressure. Put the pins back in and these two screws and you're good. So now that it's got a pin in, you can really yank on it. You can see how much you got a full double the depth on the trigger. I think that's good enough.